I, I think uh, if I can recollect of the five five years old or so on, I I think uh, you know the fact of being playing with this type of mechanics, you know, solutions or, or play toys, uh, kind of like Lego or all of that, you know, was something that uh, was always uh, part of my life. I also grew up in Venezuela, so exposed to nature. Uh, the, the curriculum I, I studied was based on Bauhaus, which was a movement in the early 40s, you know, 30s, 40s, that was uh, intended to um, uh, create solutions to today's industrial capabilities for everyone. It was a social, um, social design, if you want. Uh, then after that, actually, I, I have the opportunity to study biomimicry or bionics, which is in you know, the science of understanding nature principles and how to apply that to any products, you know, any way uh, related to structure, materials, or, or software, or any of this type of um, implementation man-made based on nature. Okay. So um, that experience, you know, from the beginning definitely influenced my life. Is, you know, my, my paradigm shifting and my, my idol have been always Leonardo. Uh, Leonardo da Vinci, you know, for me was and still is one of those impossibles. Uh, I, I think uh, the way uh, how he actually behaved in, in life and uh, he was a very curious person. He went uh, to the point of understanding functionalities and capabilities and, you know, details of every single opportunity he analyzed or studied. So he wasn't a scientist by nature, but he was a researcher. So he wasn't an artist, but he was able to express. He wasn't an engineer, but he built. And so at that time in the Renaissance, you know, you needed to actually be capable to uh, invent yourself, to reinvent, you know, and, and readapt. And, and uh, for me, his, uh, his approach, his mode, and, and, and you know, his uh, style in how he did things is something unique and, you know, hopefully, I, I wish I would be able to replicate something like that, but yes, he's my idol. Um, well, I, I work with that, I, I think uh, it was the, the cell phones, it was the, you know, communication. It, the magic of having an opportunity in any given time to connect with someone you love or someone you want or you need uh, in a second is something, you know, for me, transcendental. And then uh, when I say communication is beyond voice, is the opportunities as you have today to see someone, to you know, send images, capture any moment, you know, go up to the detail of the sensor, you know, the, the variables. That's amazing and that's something that from my point of view changed, you know, the way we live and the way we actually will behave in the future. So, yeah, in a, in a way, I would say yes. I mean, I think the saturation of where we are today, uh, culturally, uh, globally, the, the, the opportunities we have today that are, you know, impossible to replicate years ago, decades ago, uh, are putting the whole, you know, humanity in a point where everything can be shared, but there's no really uniqueness. So it's a moment on, I believe, in, in history where the more you have that information, the oversaturation will actually create a shift in uh, separation and independence and, and other, other movement, again, social or, or not. Um, this is nothing new. This happened, you know, historically before. We happen to be living that in a fast manner, but these processes are nature, are natural process that, you know, um, every uh, living organism should pass by. The difference with us and, and in animals is that we can collect the information and understand how that happened, but these cycles are repeatable. So yes, I believe that we are probably at that verge. I mean, uh, we have seen uh, these type of activities happening, you know, Silicon Valley, or I mean, you can you can pull them, you know, in pieces, but is, is that moment, is that cycle uh, happening again and probably happened faster than before? Um, but yes, it's, it's a constant evolution. So we definitely can be, say, we're living in another renaissance, yes.